Divide your clay into roughly um, two-thirds and a third. Maybe it's a little bit more uh, than one-third here in this hand. I'm, I'm going to say this is the head and uh, this is going to be the neck and torso. Um, I have a little bit of extra clay over here that for my other project, so I'm going to keep that and make sure that it's not too dry. Uh, but if you don't have a little, then I would say go ahead and reserve some because you're going to want to use additive techniques as well as subtractive. So reserve some clay and remember to wrap it up and put it away. So that is key to working with clay, is keeping it the right moisture so that it adheres to itself. And remember, if you just stick it together like that, that's not going to stay together very long. So I'm going to start today by getting a rough head shape. You can kind of shape it like this, using the palm of your hand to influence the clay in the direction that you want. I know. So firmly gripping it like that, and using your palm to wedge is a good way to keep your clay firmly. It's like the molecules of clay there are being compressed, and that makes it stronger. You don't want to uh, move it back and forth. As you remember, this clay is prone to breakage, so if you just wobble it back and forth, it's just going to make it more uh, stringy. So you're going to think about your particular pose when doing this, but I'm going to want a little bit of a different shape on one side than on the other for mine. So it's going to start like this, right? Now this is really too wet. Just like we looked at in the first semester, this is really too wet to do much with at this point. Um, you'll notice I have my um, wax paper on cardboard here. That's a pretty good surface. And that way I'm not getting a table dirty that I have to clean up all the time. I, I can just remove my sculpture and put it away so that no one messes with it because it's going to take a couple of days. I'm going to need to let this set up. I'm going to check it. I'm going to keep the ends where I'm going to ultimately be attaching the head. I'm going to keep those wet enough. Now I've got a Tupperware. You could have a little yogurt dish, uh, whatever, or a spray bottle. Um, whatever works best. I like the spray bottle, but you can certainly use your finger to put some water on it or spray it when you need to. Um, I've got some tools that I saved from last time. I have a plastic fork, which I'm going to use, um, and some toothpicks. Um, and that's really probably all that I'm going to need. Um, I've got a couple of Ziploc bags, and we're using some, and then maybe some cling wrap, but you know, any plastic bag will also do. And now I'm gonna have a look. Um, I think that once I push more of this down into the shoulders, that this actually is a pretty good um, balance of uh, amounts of clay there. So now I'm going to let these rest, and I'm going to let them rest in a way that's going to be beneficial to me. So this is going to be the chin here. I'm going to go ahead and prop this up kind of like that, and I'm going to have to switch it later so that it doesn't get flat on one side. Okay. The shoulders, you know, that type of bust is just great the way that it is. Um, before leaving this, though, I'm going to want to... See, I've got the, the part that's going to attach the neck against some other clay, so that's going to keep it kind of moist. I'm going to want to put plastic loosely over the neck piece here so that it doesn't dry up, or just wet it a little bit so it doesn't dry up. And I'm going to leave it for a couple hours and come back and see what it looks like later. Shape it a little bit more and then come back tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be able to add the two pieces together. But I probably will want to do some more shaping on the face. Not too much, not too many details, because you might blur them as you're attaching the two pieces together. You're going to want to do that when they're together so that you don't mess it up. Okay, remember, the clay remembers everything you're doing to it, so if you tear it and you just stick it back together later, that's going to fish you, it's going to be like an earthquake, and spread. The neck, where it's, I'm going to join it together, like that, with some cling wrap, but any plastic bag would do. 
Uh, and then now, now I'm going to leave it alone. Now remember, any pieces that you've taken apart, you need to wrap them up tightly because a small piece like this would dry out quickly, even in a couple of hours. I also started to set aside uh, some bits of clay. I should have done that earlier to make a slurry um, or the slip because we're going to want to use that as glue for adhering some of the smaller pieces together. Uh, just let it dissolve in water as is. So I'm going to try this in water as is. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit and then it's just going to dissolve away and I'll smush it all together and it'll be like glue. Um, so, having a look at the shoulders, um, see how it's, it's really still wet. I'm keeping this end um, covered uh, most of the time so that it, I'm able to, to attach the neck. Sometimes it responds well and other times you might just have to live with it. Uh, we are aware that this clay is pretty difficult to work with for those of you who are new, so you probably will experience some cracking like that and you're either able to repair it or you can just kind of work with it. But don't panic. We know that the clay is not very forgiving. It kind of develops a skin over it that gets hard, so you want to get it into your general shape, and that's what really makes it hard to work with, is that it'll be floppy on the inside, but then it develops a skin, so you can't really do much with the top of it, and that makes it really difficult, especially when we get to facial features. So you just kind of have to let it sit up, but at the same time, uh, keep re-moisturizing it so that you can get it um, to where it's drying, but not disallowing you to form it. I'm going to check on the head. See it too, when you leave, leave it flat somewhere, it's going to flatten out, so you're going to want to position it so that um, probably you, you move it around several times while it's drawing so you don't get a flat end. I'm getting a lot of cracks again, so see how I'm just like going ahead and smushing it. I don't want my head to have that deep crack in the forehead, so you know, regardless of how, oh, I'm smushing the features. Well, you know what? This is still wet enough that I'm going to get them back. I'm going to add a bit of water. I can't really show you how it feels, but you'll notice it's like, oh, I can't move that. It feels like leather or something, so you're not going to be able to put the features that you want to in such a hard area. So if it's like that, just rework it a little bit with some water. might take a little bit of time. The face. So it's kind of fun when it's going along. I wish this clay were more forgiving because sculpting really is a joy um, when it's going well. When you're working hard on something and it's showing cracks, it's frustrating. Okay. So you're going to tilt it, you know, depending on what kind of expression you have. You don't need, necessarily need to put it straight on. You can put it straight on, but you may want to tilt it this way or that. Um, this neck is not ready yet. My slip is not ready. I'm going to add some more clay. I thought it would go completely around. And I'm just going to drape it like that. That way that'll keep that protected. As long as you have your, it's just plastic. There you go. I can come back in and put some of the details in later, but I want to get the basic form in there. And again, my particular um, kind of quizzical look is kind of leaning like that, so one eye is going up. When it starts to get um, lumpy and hard, again, just to re-wet, that's good. That is looking like what I want it. And then you do something else and suddenly, you know, it's looking like a monkey or a ball of clay. And you're like, no, that's not it at all. So I'm going to keep putting that little twist in there because really my, it's not just the head that's turned, it's the, the eyebrow that's up and the eye looking up. And so the mouth is also kind of over here. Just look at where all this clay has gone here. So I'm going to kind of just encourage it, some of it to go down there because it doesn't need to be a cone head. 
you can use this and kind of just smooth it in and kind of seal that um, scar or whatever you can. And it works a lot better than just water because it's clay. And so it adheres to the walls of the clay and kind of fills the gap where you have cracks. And if you have started to get a dent or something, you can add some on. I get it get in there though so that it doesn't just pop off. And sometimes it's just easier to push that clay forward. See, it's looking nice and plastery, so I can put that on these spots here, and that's going to help seal them where it's cracked. Three things. Head, neck, and shoulders. That's one thing. That's the composition. Expressive facial features, or pose. That's the second thing. And the third thing is using a variety of techniques, both additive and subtractive te techniques, which is take away and add on. So. Okay, so it's getting harder and harder to press that play button, but um, this is what you want your slurry to look like. And I really got in there, you know, with my hands. It's smooth. It's like plaster. You can have it a little bit thicker, but you don't really want it much thinner. You want it to be thick enough that it's doing something. In some cases, you'll want to even take like a little bit of it and smush it down into a crack. And then, you know, the this other part here, it's kind of like the blood that binds the clay body together. And it is appropriate to speak of the clay body, whether or not it's a figure, it's just terminology that we use in clay work. Okay, so now I'm going to let this sit up a little bit. I've, you know, looked around for my cracks. I filled them as best I could with the slurry. So this is my day two. Um, I have spent uh, probably about 50 minutes on the clay so you know if I add the prep time that uh, I added in that's appropriate for two days is an hour each uh, and I think I have a few more hours to go um, and I'll finish this up tomorrow okay so I'm checking on my clay after the night and it's gotten to be uh, a much better consistency now. It does have, it's stiffened up a little bit on the inside as well, so I can kind of move it without just having problems with the, the top skin coat. So I'm going to kind of smush the nose back in because the chin was getting away there, and I'm going to try to put the lips on a little bit more, um, create some, uh, raised parts there where the mouth is going to go. So I've got the the crevice there for the, the shoulder blade, the clavicle um, with the one shoulder up and the neck lean, leaning a little bit this way and the other shoulder a little bit down. It's the shoulder blades in there nicely and I'm going to let it sit up this way. Let's see. So I want to smooth this out a little bit. You can see I've got a start of a profile there, but it's really lumpy. So I'm getting a crack here, right there, so I'm going to take my knife, plastic knife tool, I'm using the other end, uh, and I'm just going to smooth that in. The knife is um, much finer than my finger, so I'm able to apply pressure there and just smooth that back in. And at the same time, I'm going to work on the eyebrows. and the eye socket area. I can use this uh, curved shape of my plastic spoon to smooth that. See how smooth it gets? Again, I'm, apply I'm applying the slip and the water as need be when I have cracking. I'm not panicking, I'm just putting a little bit more slip in there and smoothing it into the cracks until I get the effect that I want. This plastic spoon is working pretty well for me um, as far as smoothing it and pushing the clay. So, you know, you'll just have to experiment a little bit to see what tool is the one that's going to work the best for you. But the smooth surface here that's a little bit flexible of the plastic spoon is working pretty well.
You can see I'm adding the lips and the nose. Okay, so you can see I'm smoothing down the features, pushing things where I want them to be, um, and it's starting to look more like the face that I want. Now, I'm not going uh, necessarily for classical beauty. What I want is an expression, so I'm always keeping that Scoring and slipping. You can take toothpick or this is even better, a screw. And scratch away where you're going to be adding your clay. You jab. Whatever lifts up that little skin of clay that's formed and creates uh, avenues for the water to sink in. Uh, or the slip rather, and that way you can join your clay. So I'm adding some slip. And I have my other one. I'm going to score it as well. So again, this is um, adding a little bit onto the head, and I'm going to have a bit of neck. Add some slip. You have to do the scoring and slipping or it, you, they'll just stick together for just a minute and then come apart later. So you don't want that. So I'm both pushing down from the face and up. More up because I don't want to ruin my features, but I want to join both parts and I may have to add water as I go. I'm going to try and perk up this chin a little bit since it's disappeared. Try to use gravity as your friend when you're looking for a place for to apply pressure. You don't want to be holding it the wrong way and squish your features. I'm going to pick it up before it comes completely flat. And see now I have a neck and uh, the back of the head, which I was lacking. So sometimes you'll have to do make drastic moves like that. Um, it was it was just too big, um, too top heavy, and now I have something solid to attach into um, the neck here. I think this is set up. I said let it left it alone for a couple hours. Um, it is a little bit flatter on that one side, but my neck now. Uh, is stiffer. I think I'm going to be able to join it. So I already have the three toothpicks sticking in my neck from before, um, but they're quite low down. So I'm going to put one at least in here. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to start scoring. Well, 
gonna make sure that this neck is sticking well. So I might push some clay into that crevice there between the jawline and the neck and just smooth it in. Put some moisture on there because it's a little bit hard. This is a, quite a bit wetter, so I've kept this always covered. And then I'm gonna use my slip. And hopefully, join these two forever. Hmm. So, not too bad as far as proportions. Uh, I'm going to work on that hairdo a little bit later. Right now, what I'm getting is I'm going to start by again pushing some of this clay up, and then I'll push some of that clay down. So, I'm really joining the two pieces together, they're not just sitting on top of each other, because that won't last. And if your piece isn't ready for photographing, then it won't even last long enough for you to finish um, whatever you need to do before the photograph. I will advise you to take your picture as soon as you get your piece finished. Don't you know wait overnight just in case there's a breakage while it's drying or some kind of catastrophe. Um, I know this is difficult, so I want to see, be able to see your efforts. So I really want her up where I can see her and put in the final touches um, and also be able to move around without picking up the sculpture. I need to work more on the braid on this side. So again, hair is fun because you don't have any necessary, uh, you don't have to have it go one way or the other. So really, whatever way it's leaning, you know, you can work with that and um, work it into whatever your idea is. <laughs> taking your picture, try to make the background less distracting by putting a solid color behind it, a piece of cardboard, you know, white is going to really be make it hard to see unless you paint your uh, bust, and of course you do not have to paint it, that's just your choice. Um, so again, just put a solid color back there instead of just your room, um, anything will do, a piece of paper even um, will help it look, be more visible. And then take a picture from two sides. Choose your best sides to take your picture. And that's it, you're done. <laughs>